What's going on guys, Billy here, and last night before I went to sleep, I had this video idea right here, doing an urban range test with the Mavic Mini. So, I'm not gonna waste that much time. I'm gonna put this drone up into the air, and then as we're flying, we'll have a discussion here about some of the things I expect to find, um, and I guess we'll also chat a little bit about the Mavic Mini. So, what I wanna do for this video, for this range test, is fly up to 330 feet, and then I'm gonna head down the Schuylkill River. Um, there's a really strong headwind today flying down the river. Honestly, just for the past couple of days, it's been really windy. All right, so we're gonna fly down the river here with the Mavic Mini. Um, I am surprised that I'm even getting 19 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour out of this drone. Um, so the purpose of this range test, doing it in an, ur in an urban environment, is to see exactly how this drone will handle with interference. So I'm flying down the river here. To my left, there's buildings. To my right, there's buildings. There's a highway over there all the way on the right side. There's a train on the left side. So there's a lot of interference to be had here. And I really want to see how this drone is able to handle all of that interference because chances are you're not going to be out at the beach flying your drone every single day. Maybe you are, and if you are, well, that's great and that's awesome. But a lot of people who, bought, who buy this drone are going to be flying it probably in an area where they're gonna experience interference. And this is a really good test because of the buildings to my right and to my left. And I'm not flying over any of these buildings, but I'm still experiencing the interference coming off of them. So right now we're at about 2,000 feet down the river. We're still experiencing some, some really good image transmission here. There, there's no interference, there's no breakup. I can pitch the gimbal downwards for you guys here and you'll see that there's no breakup. It's still nice and smooth. You can see the cars moving back and forth. The drone just slowed down a lot. We were humming at what, like 23, 24 miles an hour, then we went all the way down to seven. So it must be fighting a pretty strong gust out there right now. I actually tried shooting this video a little earlier and I had to wait because it was so windy. I put the drone up, I was flying down and my maximum speed in sport mode was like three miles an hour. So the wind has since died down. Um, and also you'll notice by the title of this video that I'm going to be comparing this between the Spark as well as the Mavic Air. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video, but I did this same exact flight here with those two drones just to see how the interference kind of stacks up amongst all of them and see which one gives us the most range. Now we're not flying in a perfectly straight line here. We're kind of flying on a diagonal or almost like a dog leg down the river. Um, so we're flying at a good 20 miles an hour. I'm glad we're not stuck at seven miles an hour. And we're just at about 3,700 feet. I feel like the wind is actually pushing me from left to right because the drone is hard to keep right in the center of the water here. At least there's some train tracks to my right and it's not a highway directly to my right. So in some of my other testing with the Mavic Mini, I found that I've gotten hmm, about 5,000 feet out of the drone. Um, actually in this exact spot, I found myself getting to about 5,800 feet. So we'll see if that's true here. The reason I wanted to do this live is to show you guys the range of the drone in real time. I didn't want to just throw up some sort of screen recording and then talk over it. I wanted to be here present in the moment to kind of fill you guys in on what's going on. Um, so we're almost here at one mile. And if you guys read the spec page on the Mavic Mini, DJI says that it's rated for 2.5 miles over their advanced or enhanced Wi-Fi system. Um, and that's in perfect condition. So if you're over on the water if you're on a beach and there's really no interference yeah you're going to find yourself getting two and a half miles but in the city or at least somewhere where there's a lot of interference you're going to find yourself getting significantly less so i expect us to get around six thousand feet that's what i'm hoping for here i think we're going to be able to make it to that final bridge all the way at the end and then we're finally going to lose connection um, also, it's a good thing we're still flying at about 16 miles an hour and we're not at a standstill. I know I continue to say that. Um, you'll notice once we start looking at the spark here, once we start looking at the spark here, uh, that the drone is just getting thrown around by the wind. The great thing about having a three axis gimbal on the Mavic Mini is the stability of the camera. And even today where it's very windy, you guys might even be able to hear it through the microphone. The camera looks absolutely stable. There's no jitter, there's no nothing. We are starting to slow down a little bit here. Actually, it seems like we are picking up speed. I'm gonna pitch the gimbal downwards here. And it looks like we've still got a nice smooth video transmission system coming through or a, or a image transmission coming through uh, at about 6,100 feet. That's pretty great. I expect us again to lose signal a little bit past that bridge over there. Starting to get over the trees. I'm gonna move back over to the center of the water here. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of my flying is done in areas where there's going to be a significant amount of interference. And the fact that a little drone like this can even get me 6,400 feet, even if the drone came back right now, I would be happy with it. It looks like we just got an RC signal lost alert in the top left corner. Actually look in the top right corner as well where that Wi-Fi um, logo is. That shows us the connection between the drone and the remote controller. It still looks really strong, although you'll notice we're starting to see some stutter in the cars going back and forth. So I don't know exactly how well it's going to hold up as we continue to fly. It might drop off pretty quick here. We're at 6,800 feet. We're almost at 7,000 feet here. I never would have expected a little drone like this could fly this far. It is pretty incredible what DJI was able to do. Um, now, a, a little note on this running Wi-Fi over uh, OcuSync. You know, OcuSync would have added weight. It, al it also would have made the price of the drone go up. Um, Wi-Fi is much more practical, practical for a drone of this size. There's so many people saying, well, I would have bought this drone if it had OcuSync 2 in it. But that's just not feasible. Um, we're at 7,700 feet. I've gotten further than I expected now. It's starting to give us a warning in the top left corner saying aircraft signal interference. We're still buzzing down the water here, 320 feet high, 28 miles an hour. We're finally actually flying at a good pace here. But look, guys, I'm at 52% right now for my battery. So I'm going to want to think about getting this back pretty soon. Um, I actually took off with, I think, like 90% battery here. Low battery, okay, so it, it's telling me that it wants me to return to home now. It's also saying aircraft power insufficient. That is a real big bug that DJI has. Um, when you're flying in sport mode, it pretty much tells you that it's draining more power than it should. And when I first saw that, I thought that my drone was just going to go down. All right, so look, guys, uh, I'm at 50%, still telling us strong wind. This has gotten so much further than I expected. When I did like a short range test earlier, I was dropping out at about 5,800 feet. But the fact that we're almost at two miles here, that's incredible. I really am going to want to start thinking about heading back now, though. All right, so we actually just dropped out. We're still flying, but the image dropped out. So you'll notice at the bottom, our distance is still going, but the image has totally now dropped out. So look, guys, I'm going to return to home. I'm going to cancel here and spin the drone around. If you look down... That's my radio going off. Sorry about that. Um, if you look down at the... Uh, what's it called the map um, we actually still have our telemetry and everything updating so let me focus on getting this back right now and then we're gonna meet back in my studio and go over some of the things that we've found Alrighty, so it is definitely warmer inside of here. Now for a video like this, I usually already know what the outcome is going to be just because I've been flying these drones for so long, I know how they operate. So in my mind, I can make a prediction as to which drone is going to outperform the others, right? So we flew the Mavic Mini, that was pretty much the whole entire focus of this video. We also flew the Mavic Air, which is a step above the Mini. And then we've got the Spark, which is considered the step below the Mini. And I also figured we'd throw in the Mavic 2 Zoom at the very last second, just to see how OcuSync 2 will compare to the Wi-Fi transmission system and my predictions were totally wrong. So I thought the Mavic 2 Zoom would come out on top and then the Mavic Air and then the Mavic Mini and then the Spark, but it was actually Mavic 2 Zoom, Mavic Mini, Spark, and the Mavic Air at the very bottom. So starting things off with the Mavic 2 Zoom, right? I already knew that this drone was going to come in first. And I noticed that as I was flying down the river, I had no interference, I had no breakups, no stutters in the video connection. I ultimately got to the very end, which was 9,800 feet, my max distance here. I totally lost control of the drone. I didn't have any connection between the remote and the uh, drone itself. And I also totally lost the image coming back but that's only 300 feet further than what I got on the Mavic Mini coming in at 9,500 feet. It doesn't make sense that a drone with a Wi-Fi transmission system can almost beat a drone with OcuSync 2. It just doesn't make sense. I almost wanna call it a fluke, but I did two tests and they were correct. Both drones caved the same exact range when I did them again. Now there are definitely going to be infinite possibilities as to like, what type of interference you're going to encounter. So maybe if I was closer to the city, the Mavic 2 Zoom would compare or would, would do so much better than the Mavic Mini. 
But still, in this test, I can't believe that the Mavic Mini did so well. Now, the drone that came in second was the Spark. My max distance was 6,800 feet. And just like the Mavic 2 Zoom and even the Mavic Mini, as I was flying down, I noticed almost no breakup in my signal. I got to 6,800 feet and the drone just pretty much stopped working. It just returned home at that point. I had no control over it and I had no image coming back to my controller. Now, I do have to say throughout this entire flight with the, Ma or I'm sorry, with the Spark, it was just painful to see because look at how much the gimbal is getting thrown around and the drone is getting thrown around. It really just doesn't do good in high winds. Um, and the Mavic Mini, because of that three axis gimbal, is going to definitely give you more stable photos and more stable video when you're flying in these higher wind uh, scenarios. Now look, the drone that came in last was the Mavic Air. And this is probably the biggest surprise out of them all because this is a drone that I expected to do better than the Mavic Mini, but it came in dead last. In fact, as soon as I hit about 3,000 feet, the video feed was so choppy. And until I got to my final distance of 5,400 feet, again, coming in last, it just was unusable. I would have to turn around at that point because I've got no idea what I'm even looking at. I think that there is a reason behind this. It's because I was flying over the 2.4 gigahertz frequency band, while all these other drones, I was flying over the 5.8 gigahertz frequency band. The Mavic Air is supposed to be able to operate over 2.4 and 5.8, although for some reason within the settings, it was locked at 2.4 and I couldn't change it. I don't know if they took that feature away or if they maybe had to disable it because it wasn't operating properly, but being stuck on 2.4 gigahertz, which does give you longer range, but you're gonna experience more interference really did limit the Mavic Air. And that's probably the biggest determining factor in all of these drones and why it performed so poorly. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it wasn't like the most scientific comparison, but seeing the Mavic Mini being able to fly almost two miles in an urban setting, it's just mind blowing for how small it is, for its price, and for using Wi-Fi transmission system. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.